Okay, so we ever looked up at the night sky and thought, wow, how incredibly wondrous that all of these stars and planets and uh, galaxies all revolve around me. Unless you're super full yourself, you've probably not thought that as we are taught now from a pretty young age that we revolve around one planet of which there are many around one star of which there are many that makes up a whole galaxy of which there are literally millions of billions. But back in the day, and by back in the day I mean like the 15th century, scientists didn't know that yet, and it was assumed that everything, sun, stars, planets, all revolved around us. But one of the first people to predict our place in the solar system, and as a result kind of sparked the entire scientific revolution that led a huge part in the Renaissance, was a young lad named Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus was born in Poland in 1473 and came from a wealthy enough family where he was able to study a variety of things, primarily medicine and law and the church, and somewhere along the line of his studies he got interested in astronomy. Anyone who studied astronomy at this time probably picked up Ptolemy's Almagest, and Ptolemy's theory of, like, everything scientific was just what was accepted, and it had been accepted for the past 1300 years. However, astronomers of the day were beginning to question whether the text was actually sound due to some pretty obvious errors. For example, it said that the moon's size varied in size in two times every month, meaning it grew to two times its size and shrunk every month. And despite what Freaky and Supermoon articles have you believe, the moon is never two times its size. Even on a supermoon, it's no. And considering errors as big as that one, there was a lot of astronomy just in question, particularly the geocentric model of the universe. Ptolemy's model said the Earth was at the center and then everything orbited around it. First the Moon, then Mercury, Venus, the Sun, and then Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. One of the big old mathematical flaws was that planets sometimes moved backwards in the sky. You notice this if you look at like a certain planet for a period of nights, particularly Mars, it'll be going this way and then over a couple nights it'll start moving this way. And that was kind of a problem because if, if it just didn't make sense and they tried to account for it using like epicycles and that meant like circles within circles and it was all just very complicated and it wasn't working. However, this was also a time when most people believed that the Bible was the word of God and that the church interpreted the Bible and the church interpretation of the Bible was the word of God and if you disagreed with God, then you gotta go. Despite this, Copernicus began to formulate his theory of a heliocentric or a sun-centered system. By 1514 he had his theory that Earth was not the center, it was more likely the sun was the center. The planets also moved around the sun in orbits and the distance from like the earth to the sun was very small compared to the distance from like the earth to all the stars. And all of those ended up being correct. But because it was so scandalous to like even think these things, he did not tell anybody and kept working on them like on the DL. Uh, cause he didn't want to be, you know, dead. By 1532, he had made all the observations and all the calculations necessary to prove where he was in the universe. He had also finished his first manuscript of his book saying so, called The Revolution of the Celestial Spheres, but he did not publish it because he was still worried about the uh, stake-burning death that would come of it. But like, word got around that Copernicus like had this theory and had this book and it like got around with the nobles and even like hit the Pope, like the Pope knew and the Pope didn't say anything and so it was kind of just like chill. But he still didn't even like do anything. Seven years pass and he's still like, I just got this book, I have so. What am I? Oh. Around this time, this younger German mathematician named George Rectus comes around to study and learn everything he can from Copernicus, and Copernicus shows him his theory, and Rectus is like, Bro, you freaking gotta share this with the world, or you are doing a disservice to the world. Come on, man. And Copernicus is finally like, Oh, uh, okay, but just like a little bit and put it in your book. And so Rectus does. He puts a little bit of the summary of the heliocentric theory in his book and no fires come. So Copernicus gives his manuscript to Rectus to be published in Germany. And in true scientific scandal, there's an author's note at the beginning of the book by this preacher named Osiander, which says, Quote, for these hypotheses need not be true, nor even probable. On the contrary, if they provide a calculus consistent with the observations, that alone is enough. 
for this Art, it is quite clear, is completely and absolutely ignorant of the causes of the apparent movement of the heavens. Basically, like, this is nice if it helps you with your calculations, but it's not, like, true. This understandably made Copernicus and Reticus, like, you know, a little bit upset, but it's likely that it was one of the reasons it was able to circulate so widely throughout Europe, and one of the reasons that it got into the hands of people like Galileo Galilei and Johannes Kepler, who were able to prove his theory as correct and expand on it further and uh, make that theory the one we know today. So that is Copernicus. And he did all that without even a telescope. He's just looking up. Uh, yeah, what a bro. Thank you guys for watching. You now you know about Copernicus. Your life is, is more now. You, happy day.